thinking it's live. You guys, happy Wednesday. We're all going to need some caffeine. If it's available. If it's available. If we can get some caffeine, if it's available. If it's available. (laughs) We're going to be talking a lot about Christine Blasey Ford. You guys never thought you were going to hear that name again. It was not going to be too soon if I never heard it again. It was not on my bingo card yesterday. Yeah. I will say her hair looks very nice. (laughs) Well, like, listen, $650,000 and a GoFundMe will do that. It'll give you a nice little glow up, won't it? I mean, I guess that's what it yeah. is, right? Somebody give, somebody give me $650,000 and my hair is going to look awesome. <laughs> Get all the healthy cell. Oh, my gosh. Anyways. Yeah, we are going to talk about her. In a little bit. I should tell people um, really quick before we get started. You should go to our website, chicksontheright.com, and then go subscribe to our newsletter. You can see our happy little faces and then click on subscribe for our newsletter. Do that. Do it. Subscribe to it. You mm-hmm. should do that. Yeah. Um, some tidbits before we get into the meat of the show. Um, first of all, first and foremost, thank you and happy 14th anniversary to gay. Obra Slinsky and her husband, Ted. Happy She sent us a little Venmo treat last night and said, please wish my husband and me a happy anniversary. What did so, you, wait, did you say the year? How many, how many years? 14, 14 years. 14 years. Happy anniversary. 14 years. So hopefully she sees this. Um, thank you very much, Gay, for sending that to us and hoping that you have the best anniversary time. Um, also I mentioned this to you offline a couple days ago, but I thought, you know what? There might be other people out there who are big, big fans of Richard Simmons and they should know that Richard Simmons is on X tweeting or Xing or whatever it is that you do out there on what used to be known as Twitter. He is very, very active now. And he's like all Mr. Like positivity pants, you know, as you can imagine. So if you are a fan of Richard Simmons, you can find him on X now. Hey, and fun I just... fact. Fun fact. He kissed me once when I was in the fourth grade. What? Yeah. we. I went to the High Museum of Art. I was on a fourth grade field trip in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, <laughs> walked in with my fourth grade class. He doesn't remember this probably, but I saw him. <laughs> it's just a weird, strange, very bizarre <laughs> occurrence. But he ran over and he like kissed me on the cheek. It was. Oh, just, my gosh. It's just a very weird happening that happened it was i don't know why it was there it was just you know like weird things happening in your life and i've and i love richards i love him he's such a just a happy sweet joyful man yeah i wonder if he's still sweating to the oldies i don't know if he's sweating to the oldies but he is tweeting (laughs) so and he seems like he's doing great um Mm -hmm. he scared everybody and this is actually how i discovered because you know how like on twitter there's a for you thing and so it just the algorithm shoots you things that yeah. it think you might be interested in and so i saw a tweet of his where it says um good morning everybody i'm dying and then he went on to say but of course we all are and so this is how you should like live your last you know your best <laughs> life and everybody was like wait what like are you dying like right now or are you just trying to be how what are you old saying is, how <laughs> old is he right now I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna don't tell you. Know. I'm telling you yeah, right now. I'm telling. I'm telling you. He is. How old is he? He is 75. Okay. 75 so years old. Maybe mm-hmm. he's just thinking about mortality, but like the way that he phrased it did send people off the deep end. And, and of he course, had to like backtrack, and he was like, "I'm fine. I just was trying to make the point that yeah. you should live every moment like it's your last." And of course, you, know. you were served that. That was something I was that served you <laughs> were served. Right. <laughs> right. I yeah. was served it up. Yeah. So anyway, so if you want to check them out, you should do that. Um, for those of you who've asked about Ella Dog, thank oh, you very yeah. much for asking. She's in the exact same place as I showed you yesterday. She's in her cage right behind me. And she jumped off the bed by herself this morning before I could even stop her because I would have not allowed it to happen. I turned on the light and then went to go pick her up and she'd already jumped off the bed. So she's clearly feeling like she can see better and like she knows she's got her bearings so i think things are on the mend the vet called yesterday to check on her which i just thought was so sweet and so i asked her like all kinds of follow-up questions and and she said yeah it sounds like she's on the mend and when we see her back next thursday i expect her to be totally back to normal so she had a vestibular incident that is now past and so very very happy that she praise be 
Yeah. Right? Cause I need, mm -hmm. I need a little more time with her. <laughs> I mean, I was prepared to not have more time with her yeah. when we went in the other day. Um, as prepared as you can ever be, I guess, for that moment. But like now that the moment has passed, I'm really, really glad to have I'd more time, time with her. Yeah, exactly. So because she's my best girl. Couple new podcasts to make people aware of. Not that I'm suggesting you listen to either of them because they sound dreadful. But uh, Caitlyn Jenner has paired with Lamar Odom, the guy that cheated <laughs> on oh Caitlyn's daughter. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was Chloe, right? Chloe. He was yes. married. He was married to Chloe, I think, for like two seconds. For literally, I think like that's two right. Seconds, for, yeah, married. like a couple minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, all the the men that the Kardashians have ruined. <laughs> right. They just Caitlin need to get being Scott, one of them because he's right. not even any longer. That's what I'm saying. A man. <laughs> they need to get <laughs> like Scott one. Disick in there and like some other dude. Who, did you see the pictures of Scott Disick? Ozempic. He's taking Ozempic. He's got to be. He's taking way too much. Like uh -huh. he needs. Back that off. He's, this, this is the thing. They've, they, they have all ruined so many men. They just need to like add a bunch of more men to that list. Kanye, <laughs> they need to get Kanye on it too. That's, that's a lost cause. Mm -hmm. um, but Caitlyn Jenner, Lamar Odom have started a new podcast called Keeping Up With Sports where really i guess they're going to talk about sports and of course there's a nod to the name of the kardashians reality show okay. the whole keeping up with so if you're that's happening in that right <laughs> yeah you can check that mm -hmm. out and then also you bernie what do you gotta but why you're starting a podcast oh my god no by himself yes. he's doing it by yes. himself why yes. i don't know i think the first couple episodes allegedly are gonna be about his new book um which is called something like it's okay to hate capitalism or something like that. <laughs> what so <laughs> it's it's non-fiction it's not one of his fictional books it's about like you it's know, not rape. like erotica or it's whatever not about erotica or rape or whatever it is you used to write about Remember, remember you used to write about that kind of stuff because he's a complete sick you know what oh my god mm -hmm. so that's that is another podcast that's mm -hmm. coming out which <laughs> cannot believe why why are sitting congress people podcasting i know everyone was like so mad that i was criticizing ted cruz for having this podcast but they were like yeah. but it's so great because he tells you the ins and outs of what's going on i don't care it's not appropriate and it's yeah it, is, it it's takes kinda, way more time than you guys can possibly realize it, unless true. you do a podcast it's it takes a lot of prep and i guess maybe unless they just like decide to just get on a microphone and just start talking willy-nilly maybe there is no prep for those people i don't know but um, i just can't imagine that that's a thing i mean i don't yeah i mean but like they do work as senators <laughs> <laughs> i mean like that takes actual work it probably i know for a fact it takes more work to do a podcast than it does to be a senator i'm gonna <laughs> i stand i stand beside that comment i mean it's probably mm -hmm. it's a lot of work is what we're saying I stand beside <laughs> it. it doesn't seem like it maybe i see i will die but on it that actually hill. is i will die on that hill <laughs> Um, one of the things that this whole Ella experience has taught me is that I need to be using coat defense preventative powder on her ears, which I have never done before because she has never had an ear infection before. So Maisie, Maisie gets this on the regular uh, because Maisie is super prone to ear infections. And when you just sprinkle a little of this in her ears, you just rub it in and like she hasn't had an ear infection in ages and ella has never in her entire 14 and a half years had one and so i've just never used this because she's not a dog that i thought needed it well now once this clears this is going to be part of our routine this stuff is amazing and not only does it help prevent infections in ears and prevent skin issues on coats but it also treats and so I, this is i you know obviously in this situation i was not I, I needed more than coat defense because she was having what I thought was a stroke. Um, so this is not what I thought of in that moment. But as a preventative, it absolutely will be. And if your dog is a dog like Maisie, who deals with routine infections, 
This stuff is freaking amazing. And it's just one of many products in a huge line of products from CoatDefense.com that takes care of dogs, cats, horses, and even people too. They have like deodorant body powder for people, which is amazing. All natural, no toxic stuff that you have to worry about. It can save you a ton on vet bills. And you can also save 15% off your entire order when you visit CoatDefense.com and use promo code CoatDefense. Dot com. Thank you, C. Douglas. C. Douglas says, good morning to my chicks. Have you thought about elevating Ella Dog's food and water bowls? They already are. We have the elevated kind for both the girls. Um, so she's she's not she's had no problem eating so that's one good thing is that i know with this vestibular issue a lot of dogs get super nauseous and have trouble keeping stuff down not been ella dog ella, ella dog ella dog eats better than her husband i promise you <laughs> ella dog acts mm -hmm. well both the girls do they act like they have never been fed before right, right. at every mm -hmm. meal <laughs> right. exactly yeah. they're always ravenous so <laughs> Anyway, all right. So last uh, little tidbit before we get to, into videos, because we got to talk about all of this stuff with Trump not being able to make bond and what's going to happen. We spent some time on that yesterday. Lots more to get to today. Um, and we also talked about yesterday the fact that Mike Pence is not going to endorse Trump and he's like making a big show of that on the talk shows. Yeah. Indiana Senator Todd Young now saying the same thing, only oh. he's saying he will not vote for Donald Trump. Mike Pence was a little cagey about that part, kind of making it sound like, well, I might, I might, I'll, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do at the polls. That's like my private privacy. Uh, Todd Young is just flat out saying, I am not voting for Trump. I am not voting for Biden. And he had the gall to also say, I'm tired of my vote being taken for granted as if he hasn't. That's how I have felt about voting for Todd Young all the time. You know yeah, what I mean? exactly. I, I constantly feel like he takes my vote for granted yeah. by never doing conservative things. Mm -hmm. So oh, just I'm just irritated by mm -hmm. Indiana Senator. Very, very. Yeah, irritating. I just it's a lot of Indiana politics in general. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of this, gonna, a lot of those, a lot of those guys it. that get into office and they become Democrats. How about all of right? you suck it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes, please. Please mm -hmm. do suck it. Uh, Curio 23. Thank you. Curio says dad joke Wednesday. Why do Irish chilies only have 239 seeds? Because if it had one more then it would be 240. Farty. Too farty. I get it. I get it. I see what you did there. <laughs> It's not my favorite. I'm going to tell you that right now. We've but. got Dad Joke Wednesday stuff coming up. So stay <laughs> tuned for that. Got a montage. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get into this whole Bond thing. So, uh, and actually, let's just kind of get into Trump's legal battles as a whole. Apparently, um, earlier this week, um, the, ju the, the judge in the Stormy Daniels case, because that is still a thing, um, the judge denied Trump's request to prevent Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels from being able to testify. And the judge was like, bitch, please. Of course, they're going to both testify. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that I really trial, wish the judge would have said that. <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. That trial is actually going to start next month. And the judge also ruled that he would allow testimony about the Access Hollywood tape. Um, to, to be part of this case, but that playing the tape itself to the jurors would not be necessary. <laughs> so I don't even know why that, anyway, that's one of the court cases that could be actually starting um, within the next month. And then in the meantime, you remember how Nancy Mace got all mad at George Snuffleupagus? Mm hmm well, now uh, Trump has decided to file a defamation suit against ABC and George, claiming that they uh, tarnished his reputation by saying that he'd been found liable for raping E. Jean Carroll, which he had not. He'd been liable for sexually assaulting her or sexually abusing her. I forget the, the term, but rape was at, was unequivocally not one of the verdicts. I love this. I so love it. I love it. Freaking love this. <laughs> Every time that that's mentioned, he should do this. Every time that somebody calls him a rapist, he should do this. Right? 
Like just so do it. I thought that was super yeah. interesting. It's it's like the guy that does the let's get ready to rumble and he sues every single time somebody says yeah. that, you know, and does it in that voice. I hope he doesn't sue me for saying that. <laughs> but every time that he sues for that, seriously, he, Trump should do this. Fantastic mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. So that's happening. I don't know where that will end up, but <laughs> but that is something that is happening. And um, and then, of course, as we mentioned yesterday, there's this whole hullabaloo about the bond and Trump's inability to come up with all of the money to pay the bond. And so, uh, Caitlin, we've got perspectives about this from all kinds of people. Um, and so we'll start off with Caitlin Collins and whoever it is that she's talking to. I don't even remember who this guy is. It'll say on the screen um, and for some Here analysis. tonight is CNN senior legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Ellie Honig. And Ellie, I should note that uh, Trump's team, when we asked about, you know, the concern that he has over making this half a billion dollar bond, called it pure BS and noted that he has filed this motion to unstay what they're calling an unjust and unconstitutional judgment. What they're asking for is either don't make us pay this while we're appealing or let this bond be a lot smaller than this, you know, nearly half a billion dollars. Uh, what do you make of this new reporting, though? So they should be panicked. I mean, this is real. Like, it may not have set in yet for Donald Trump, but this deadline of Monday is real. This judgment is $400 plus million. And what's going to happen on Monday if Trump cannot post a bond is Letitia James has made very clear she will start the process of seizing his assets, of freezing, putting liens on his bank accounts, his real estate holdings. And that's going to be devastating for him. And there's no sort of shortcut here. That's what's going to happen if he doesn't come up with a bond. So our reporting and what I was hearing from people is that he was basically counting on Chubb, which put up the bond for the Eugene Carroll case to help here. But the problem is, is that he doesn't have as much to leverage when it comes to a second bond that is one much bigger and two, obviously the second one that he's now doing in just a matter of weeks. Yeah. Realistically, what options does his legal team have here? Yeah, $90 million is one fifth of $400 million or so. So he's in a tough spot. There are two things that can bail Trump out of this. One is, remember, he has moved to the Court of Appeals in New York, the appellate division, asking them to reduce the amount of the bond. That happens sometimes. It's hard to say how often because there's no sort of overarching <laughs> data on it. But there are examples of the appeals court coming in and reducing a bond by 80, 90 percent. So perhaps he'll get bailed out by the court. And the other option is he comes up with the money, whether he has some sort of angel investor or some sort of generous donor or perhaps some company like Chubb that's willing to take a risk. But the status quo now is he has scoured the earth and been able uh, unable to come up with that as of an angel investor. And Mark Levin was actually like tweeting out the other day, where are all the Republican billionaires? Why aren't they helping? Why aren't they loaning him money? Mm -hmm. And I there that's addressed um, in some of these other clips that we have to play. This, yep. um, this one comes from uh, Fox Business, and I think it might be actually addressed in this clip, if I'm not mistaken. None of his billionaire friends yeah. are ponying up money, from what I understand. I've been asking them. I mean, there are a lot of them. I mean, Bernie Marcus today. Uh, the former Home Depot founder wrote an op-ed that's saying the country needs to rally around Trump. Um, you know, as of now, I, I, I don't think Bernie's Bernie's worth six billion. I don't think he's given any what, money. What yet. is behind their reluctance? Well, it's as of now. So right. let's I see. That. I mean, Are it, they it afraid could, that they change. might not see it anytime soon? The money, if he even succeeds on appeal, uh, what, what, what's, what's yeah? The I problem? mean, that's that's one thing. I mean, I think I don't want to, you know, I don't want to speak for Bernie Marcus. That's sure. for sure. But uh, but just generally, John, Donald has doesn't have a great record at paying back banks over the years. And uh, Donald Trump. So you, uh, you know, uh, you can sort of surmise from that what you what you will. But if you think about it, he has friends or did like Steve Schwartzman over at BlackRock. He has, uh, you know, Tom Barrick, the hedge fund billionaire. I mentioned Bernie, uh, Howie Lorber. I mean, you go down the list. You got to ask yourself why they're not throwing him some bucks now, you know, lending him some money. And maybe they will. But or maybe they're so afraid of retribution from Letitia James's office. I mean, that's, and the better that's part good, of valor is to stand back. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Although, listen, she runs the New York AG's office, which has tremendous power because yeah. they have some because she has something known as the Martin Act, which can really go after a lot of businesses. It's it's and, and the bar for intent is very low. So that's that's one thing. But some of these folks don't have really a lot of business in New York. I mean, Howie Lorber does. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what the other ones, the, the, you know, Bernie's essentially retired. So, uh, you know, there is that there's that issue. There's another issue here, though. And this could be really interesting. Um, you know, 
know, Trump's properties, if he has to if he has to turn them over to her because he doesn't have the he doesn't have the cash for a bond are encumbered by a lot of weird stuff, partnerships, limited partnerships. You know, there is a thought here in Trump land. Let's give her the properties and let this genius figure it out about <laughs> unwinding these things and figuring out which part of these buildings is Trump's and which part is a, a limited partnership that isn't Trump. And then, you know, let's see if she could figure that out. I love that. <laughs> let her do Let her figure it out. Right. Yeah. But is that like, would that be on her or would it be on him to figure it out? I, I don't know how any of this works. So I, I have no idea. Well, I but mean, I, I would imagine he'd be like, if you want it, take it. Fig you yeah, just I mean? figure it out. Figure it out, biatch. Honestly. Yikes. I mean, that seriously, at that point, that's what I would. I, why would he have to do that? <laughs> it's just, how asinine is that? He didn't ask for any of this crap. Yeah. This is outrageous what they're doing to him. And listen, the whole like lending money to somebody, I'm sure a lot of these billionaires are probably like, well, I mean, I, it, will I ever see that money again? If I give him, you know, however, a billion dollars, if I give him like half a billion dollars, will mm -hmm. I ever see it again? That's a lot of freaking money. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot like, of money. I don't, if, if you feel like you're not going to see it again for whatever reason, and it may have nothing to do with, you know, Trump being a good guy, but it, it may just be that he's in such, you know, he's in such trouble right now with all of these cases that it may just be a, just the, the notion of he may not be able to, to pay it back with all of this stuff going on. So if, if you feel like you're not going to get it back, these guys are, in, they're businessmen. They're, they're right. probably like, I don't want to get the money. To, you know what I mean? It's going to be a gift. Do you want to give a gift of half a billion dollars? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> it's I a, probably, that's a pretty big gift. It's a nice it, thing to do. Right. You got to be really it benevolent. Was just, it was so odd to me that Mark Levin was like, how dare they not do this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you can just expect just because someone is rich mm -hmm. that they're going to be willing to be like, here you go, Donald. Have right. at it. They're rich because they don't do that. <laughs> You know, right. That's why these people are rich because <laughs> they don't give their um, money away. Yeah. Matt Gates was on with Abby Phillips, who, oh, my God, I cannot stand her for so many reasons. But um, she was pushing him on whether or not the RNC should help pay the bills. And he insists that they should. Um, he doesn't like it, but but it's not. It's, you know, Trump doesn't want all of this to be happening to him in the first place. So here is Matt Gates. On the appellate court system in New York. Well, uh, one last thing on Trump and his legal woes. Right now, uh, he, as the RNC has said that they want to help him pay for his legal bills, his leadership PAC has spent more than $55 million just on legal bills. That's 85% of its spending. Are you comfortable with that? No, I wish he weren't being attacked like this. I mean, but Trump you, is up in your I mean, polling. but he is. Are you comfortable with his leadership pack using the money that's being raised from ordinary people in a lot of cases to pay his legal bills? Yeah, it's a necessity. Your network covers a nauseum that this money is used for this purpose, and yet it continues to be contributed for people who believe that President Trump is under siege. And so I think that we have to view the fusion of the criminal justice system and this presidential campaign is something that we have to combat with every force we have at the RNC and President Trump's campaign and with our own donations. And, you know, it, it, it does make me think, like, how much further ahead of Biden would we be if we weren't having to fight not only on the political front, but on the civil front, on the criminal front and, and seemingly everywhere else? One way to avoid that would be to not get into legal trouble, which Trump yeah, seems but, yeah, to but be these, doing these, these all the time. These are novel legal theories that oftentimes are woven together in ways that have never been applied against other people. Look at the Alvin Bragg case Just that's about to nobody has ever done what Trump is alleged to have done doesn't Bullshit. mean that he shouldn't be held accountable Well, but for but it. you see you see similar conduct not treated the same way. I want to exactly. move on. Just famous. I want to move on. Yeah, I bet yeah. you do. I bet you want to <laughs> move on. <laughs> <laughs> he was totally winning that fight. <laughs> She's like, oh, I want to move on right now. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah she did not like that. Mm -mm. She did no, not that like was, it. And I've got he another that. clip of her later that is just going to make you see. That. God, I can't stand her. Oh. Yeah, but he was handling that beautifully. Yeah. And he now, was right. I do think, I, I do feel like there should be separation between 
you know, because there's probably a lot of Americans that gladly and willingly and 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 wantingly, for lack of a better word, want to help Trump with his legal bills. And when mm -hmm. they make a contribution to a super PAC or wherever, they expect that that's what their money is doing. But there's also a lot of people who want to help him get reelected separately and apart from his legal woes. And I just feel like there should be separation there like there should be whatever a, a GoFundMe. i know that there was one set up for that purpose right, right. but there th it should be kept separate out of campaigning funds and that and may so be, that may i don't know why the, that's hard that may be one of the reasons that that the fundraising has dipped that that the rnc is not making as much money as they were years ago i don't know i have no idea why but we're not doing as well financially not as close as yeah we're not even close to what the democrats were and there was a time where we were there was a time yeah. remember when we were in the black and they were in the red i remember i mean i'm old enough to remember when that was the case and now they're doing better than we are why is that you know so maybe there is some merit to that theory that it would be or at least to that suggestion that we could maybe put things down the middle and people could pick and choose i mean honestly right. like having one big pot and then things could be handled separately well, and, and I think too the reason that the the fundraising is down for the RNC is just because Rana mismanaged it so oh yeah awfully had to buy um, flowers and Botox <laughs> right. So hopefully now that there's new leadership, maybe that turns around. But and mm -hmm. and I you know Lara just even said recently that the RNC will not be paying his legal bills. So there's still mixed messaging happening about that in the media because Abby Phillips based her entire question on the RNC paying for them when they're saying that they're not. So lots of confusion about where the money for his legal bills is going to come from. Right. Um, Jessica Tarlov, of course, decides to focus on his amount of cash and whether he was lying about it initially or whether he's lying about it now. And I just like the way that the rest of the team schools her because <laughs> she's she's unbearable, you guys. Not keeping a lot of cash. Yeah. But the problem is, is that Donald Trump told us that he had the money. In April, he was in a deposition for this case, and he said, developers usually don't have cash. They have assets, not cash. I have over 400, fairly substantially over 400 million. That's just cash. That's just cash. So when was Donald Trump lying? Because he was either lying today or he was lying then. Well, he has 400 million nope. in cash. He, he just doesn't he said, have 454. A, that, he said, <laughs> I have substantially more than that. And you're telling me that the $54 million is the problem here? It's not. The issue is, is that we have no idea what's actually going on with these properties, how many mortgages he has out. That, that many companies don't say no to you unless there's something wrong with your assets. And that's not and true. And Mark has Levin ever... went on Twitter last night saying, Where, why are there no Republican multibillionaires offering to lend Trump the funds? Because the man is a credit risk, because the man lies about all of these things. And that's how he got into this level of trouble. And because he's going to be tied up in court. He doesn't have a sugar brother like the Hunter Biden does. Judge, there's never, been, there's yeah, never been, there's never been a, a bond this, this high in the I history of the United States. I think this is the time to talk about how uh, Joe Biden lies, because that's how Jessica would answer this question. Well, Jessica. <laughs> I'm convinced that Jessica Tarlov is the love child of Christine Blasey Ford. Because of her, the voice. Her voice. It's, oh, my it's, God. Isn't it Horrendous. a dead ringer? I mean, it's like she really is. She's like the more annoying child oh, of, God. of, she's of just, CBF, right? She is unbearable. Uh -huh. Absolutely, positively right. sorry unbearable. All the, all the voices we're going to be throwing at you today, you guys. You're going to need more <laughs> coffee. Like, just get more coffee. Buckle it's bad in. today. <laughs> really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Um, also wanted to remind everybody that right now on sale during GenuCell's spring sale, the product that Daisy is holding up right now, which is the Gen 90 wrinkle treatment from GenuCell and the XV cream. Do you have that too? You I don't, don't have, have that. Oh, too. no, I do. Oh, my God. I do. Oh, my gosh. I, do. I have it. It's right here. Look at that. You open that up and show people the I luxurious can't. butteriness of that well, amazing open product it up. because it is so buttery. Look at it. Can you see can how you buttery see? it is? Look, you like, can like. It doesn't. And the luxuriousness. It's like a bl it's like a DQ blizzard. You know how they flip it upside down and it doesn't come out. You know what I mean? It's so thick and yummy. Yeah. Oh my gosh! It's so 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 mm -hmm. soothing and just so good, so moisturizing. So both of those products are now included in the bestseller package, along with GenuCell's under eye bag treatment, their puffiness serum. All of this is happening during the spring sale right now at genucell.com slash chicks. 
And the Gen 90, by the way, the Gen 90 technology, super luxurious, super nourishing, silky smooth. And it works in seconds because you can feel that like you can you feel it. it. That's what it is. the sound it it's makes sound. in your brain. It's a sound. <laughs> right. I mean, it doesn't make it out loud, it but you can, it. you sense it, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So order right now, genucell.com slash chicks. You will also get a free beauty box and free deep firming serum while their supplies last and free shipping. It's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash chicks. All right. So <laughs> Brett Gutfeld also responding to... Uh, actually, he and Jesse are responding to a comment made by James Carville, apparently, um, that Trump is drowning. James Carville wants us all to believe that Trump is drowning. Here is what Gutfeld and Jesse had to say about that. Uh, I think Carville wants us to accept the premise, which is that Trump is drowning. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he's swimming backstroke around right. Joe Biden. <laughs> he's up in every battleground. He's even yeah. up nationally, which is unheard of for a Republican candidate. And he's cruising to the nomination. It's going to be a nice convention. And Biden's afraid to debate him. I, I wouldn't say he's drowning at all. I mean, and he's saying go negative. What more yeah. can Joe Biden do <laughs> yes. to go negative against Donald Trump? I'm going to launch a drone strike into Mar-a-Lago. I'm going to arrest him for the 17th time. Take all of his buildings, all of his cash. What more could they call him? They've called him every name in the book. If you were a black American and you would being offered a choice. Would you rather have the Trump economy? Would you rather have the Biden economy? Yep. It's a no brainer. Yep. There was lower gas prices, only 247 a gallon under Trump. Rates were lower. The inflation rate averaged 1.9%. Black home ownership was up. Black wages were up extra $400 a month after four years. Wages are down under Joe Biden. Rates are high. Home ownership's out of reach. Gas prices are high because inflation is just eating everything. I love the swimming analogies. I love it because it speaks to me <laughs> as a swim mom. Yeah. Right. Trump is doing the butterfly and Biden has floaty wings, you know, he's he like, he doesn't that, even have floaty wings. He's he has, like he, the kid he's on unicorn raft. Right. right. Now. He's got, he's got like the unicorn raft and the floaty wings and he's flailing in the water. <laughs> he's that kid. He yeah. is that kid. Mm -hmm. Um, Questions have been swirling about where Melania is. Will she be appearing with Donald Trump on the campaign trail? She was with him yesterday um, and was asked the question, and here's how she responded. Trump, Mrs. Trump, are you going to return to the campaign trail with your husband? Stay tuned. That's all she said. <laughs> so, <laughs> she looked, she looked beautiful. Tuned. She always does. Mm -hmm. Always, she had her, always she had her does. She tans on. She looked really pretty. Yeah. So I don't know what that means. She's either just, I guess we have to stay tuned, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is exactly what she said. Uh, all right. So big news yesterday and then even bigger news um, that happened after this big news happened yesterday with the Supreme Court. And that is that they decided, uh, and you'll see this screenshot, they ruled, they cleared the way essentially for Texas to start enforcing their SB4 law that allows them to arrest and detain illegal immigrants that they suspect or people that they suspect of entering the country illegally. Oh, gee, thanks. And <laughs> so the Supreme Court said, yes, Texas, you can do that for now while this while this case works its way through the appeals <sighs> process. And so those appeals are still ongoing in the federal appeals court, or at least they were. Um, but the Supreme Court decision yesterday was a pretty big deal and lots and lots and lots of reaction to it. So Lieutenant uh, Governor of Texas, Dan Patrick, was on shortly after this decision was reached, and he was obviously excited and had yes. this to say. Uh, but it sounds like the court has made this decision that Texas has the right to defend ourselves against this organized, mobilized, cartel-driven invasion of our country. Yeah. This is historic today, and I'm thankful for the Supreme Court a ruling. I believe the ruling was six to three. Now, this just says it goes into effect while it works its way through the courts, right. but this is a big statement that we can go into action now, and this law can become effective now. So, I just can't believe it wasn't unanimous. The three, I, I, the, the fact that it was six to three bothers me. It should bother everybody. Yeah. What is going on? It's not on? surprising. Is it surprising at all? I'm, ju I'm just, 
okay, it's it's not surprising, but it's sickening to me. Like, what in the world? Yeah, I might. It's so frustrating. Wow. Yeah, and it gets. This is where I warned you guys that Abby Phillips was unbearable. This is the clip that absolutely just sent me over the edge when I saw it because she was she was, and I use this term so loosely, reporting on the Supreme Court ruling. The absolute disgusting level of bias in her little intro monologue about this was so just vile that I I just can't even, it's unbearable. Watch. And good evening, I'm Abby Phillip in Washington. Tonight, confusion and chaos reign supreme over the border. Texas is pitted against the feds. Caught in the middle, the migrants, who can now be deported en masse and at will on a hunch. This is all happening after the <laughs> Supreme Court waded directly into the heart of the immigration issue today. They scrambled how things typically work, that immigration policy for the United States is the domain of the federal government. And there are profound constitutional questions that this raises. But in the meantime, the practical impact is becoming more clear. Scores of people could be rounded up hundreds of miles from the southern border even, based on suspicion, and suspicion alone. Local officials, sheriffs, could all be deputized to essentially enforce U.S. border policy. The court's conservative majority brushed aside a last-ditch Biden administration push to stop this new Texas law, SB4, and it now goes into effect, at least temporarily, while litigation winds its way through the lower courts. Ultimately, this could ricochet across conservative border states. If allowed to stand, it could usher in dramatic, even draconian policies that leave immigration enforcement at the hands of legislators from Austin to Phoenix. The best. It's draconian. So disgusted by her. It's, dra- it's draconian for us to actually follow our laws. Like how? Wow. <laughs> it's um, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Like she's astounded by that. Like it's draconian. Like we can just, you know what? Just follow the laws. You know, we have laws on the books. Follow them. Like the the fact that she thinks that that's draconian. uh, Okay. And that she's like, this is normally in the domain of the federal government. Well, how's that working out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, she doesn't have to care about it because she doesn't live in a border state. Right. And she doesn't she lives in probably a nice, really, really cute little gated community somewhere. in I don't know, upstate New York or. Virginia or someplace like that. She's probably like really protected from all the riffraff. So she doesn't have to worry about it. She has probably has, has a place in Martha's Vineyard too. Like so that she goes to in the summer. She doesn't have to worry about all these dirty migrants. Well, speaking of which migrants, too, DeSantis said that if Haitian illegals try to storm the Florida border, he's sending them all to Martha's Vineyard. He <clears throat> That's already the plan. He totally should. I mean, it's outrageous. These people are just, they're gross. They're gross. It's just vile. It's absolutely vile. And then Ted Lieu was, I'm seriously one of the dumbest congressmen ever. Um, He was like losing his mind about this. And then he went on MSNBC of all places and actually said this out loud. The best way to oppose fake news is for people to watch outlets like MSNBC where you report real news all the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The fact that he said that out loud, he said, yeah, it's, it's the home of Rachel Maddow. They, they, mm -hmm, yeah, it's where they have real news all the time. Russia, Russia, Russia. Oh my God. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. So all this stuff happens with the Supreme court, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Dan, uh, (laughs) Lieutenant Governor Dan is super excited. They're, you know, raring to go. Um, and then not just a few hours later, Then a federal appeals court froze the law, allowing this to happen. And at the same time, Mexico has said out loud, if you try to deport anybody here, we're sending them back. We're sending them back. We're not taking any of we're not taking anybody back. I mean, it's just and what everything is by design, you guys. This is all by design. Exactly. And why do you think they're doing that? Yeah, exactly. They don't. They don't want these people. I mean, this is it's this is all so ridiculous. And then yesterday when this happened, you know, when the original thing went through. Right. And it was like a big win for Texas. I thought to myself, what about like the eight million people that are already here? Yeah. You know, that already came like barging across the border. What do you, it's like people felt like this is a really big win. And it was like temporary. You were like, 
Yay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you think about all those people that just crashed over the border that are here, that are just like hiding, that get all the free shit, you know, that we're yeah, and then for. And these cartels and all the people that are orchestrating these mm -hmm. illegals coming over, they see this news, Absolutely. right? They see what's happening and they're like, yay. So Me Mexico's got our back. Totally. We can continue to do this. And we're all going to suffer more crime as a result. Totally. We're going to suffer more inflation as a result. All our taxes are going to be spent on illegals. Just buckle up, I guess, because that's not what just, we're expected to do. And it's not just Mexico. You know, it's it's a lot of these other countries, too, that are just they're watching and they're just like all of our crime is going down because we're sending you our best and brightest. You know, <sighs> it's just it is. It's infuriating. Maddening. And, our, and our legislators, this administration does not care. Yeah. They, they don't care. Their biggest priority is people in Ukraine and getting money from all of these other countries. You know what I mean? They don't care about you. But then Democrats will claim, oh, yeah, it's they absolutely care about us. We need to keep sending all of our money to, pay, to places like Ukraine. It's insanity what's happening to our country. Don Quixote, thank you. Don Quixote says the uh, Texas law was stayed again last late last night. Yes, I, I do promise that I get to things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you just got to give me a second. We like to tell the whole story. Right. Uh, thank you for that. Missy Sanders, thank you. Missy says, am I the only one who noticed that Trump has new top teeth? Not that it's a big deal. You can tell in that video you played with Melania. I had not noticed that he has new top teeth. No. I didn't know he needed new top teeth. I didn't either. That's very interesting. Are we interesting. sure about that? Very interesting. I did not notice that. Anastasia63, thank you. She says, do all five people still watching CNN buy this crap? They do. <laughs> Unfortunately, they do. Yeah, and the four it's that unreal, watch MSNBC they do. do too. They, this is the thing. And you know how I know that? There are actual people on the Twitter machine today who are saying Don Lemon did, like put on a master class of interviews with Elon Musk, mm -hmm. that he somehow came out on top of that interview. I, I was reading these things and I was just like, oh, my God, these are the these are the Democrat voters. Yes. These are the people yep. out there who could very likely beat Trump. Like th this is. Uh huh. I, they're out there. Yeah. They, and they, they, do and they exist. still, and they're still screen. They still believe like that three years of Russia, Russia, Russia crap. Yeah. It's, they un believe it's it. just unreal. Mm -hmm. Um, quick note before we get to Christine Blasey Ford. Um, and that is <laughs> that, <laughs> that apparently, you know, so the eclipse is coming. We've talked about the eclipse. This is happening on April 8th. It's like a big deal. You and I are both in the totality path, which is, yep. I guess, exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and like all kinds of people are expected to come where you are. They're expected to come anywhere that they're, you're in the path of totality. People are expected to be like coming to your area in droves, which is why school for my son is canceled. Like so there's no my, school and all this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now there's reports that like people should stock up on food, water, and fuel to last for at least two weeks. Why? Because of potential chaos that results from the eclipse. And if that is, is if there's going to be chaos can I just say everybody needs to calm the okay, wait, 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 wait. down? Let's, I got it. Oh, hold on. Wait. Okay. We got to back up. <laughs> we gotta, because of four minutes of darkness. Is that? That's. Yes. Okay. Yes. Like, it, it, here, my husband is, you know, listen, my husband likes science and he's, he's a, he's kind of a nerdy guy. One of the reasons I love him. Right. He likes the stuff. He likes science. He, they, my daughter and him will go look at the stars and do all the things. Right. And I'm kind of like, whatever. So this eclipse thing, I think it's neat, but I'm not like overly geeking out about it. Okay. I'm just not that kind of a person. I'm like, okay, four minutes of darkness. That's cool. Whatever. <laughs> I, one of the things he said to me the other day is he's like, I don't like the, the bit, I know everybody's making a big deal about the eclipse, but it's, we have nighttime. Like, <laughs> every day. You know what I mean? So the fact, the fact that people are going to freak out about four minutes of darkness when we have darkness every day for like hours, we, we, you know what I mean? Every night we have darkness. Why is this going to cause mass chaos? I don't get it. Why? I, four minutes of darkness. 
cause I, like I, a complete I'm freak out by this. I don't, now I am I'm geeking out about it a little bit because I understand that how rare it is. Okay, it hasn't fine. happened in like 150 years, whatever. But and I'm very excited. I'm very excited to look at it. If I did not live in the path of totality, right. I can assure you I would not be driving to it. I probably like, wouldn't I would, either. No. This is not something that I would geek out enough over that I would be taking a road trip to see it. Exactly. Like that's I, just... I, I mean, don't people understand that, do, that level that's, of excitement. That's cool that people do it. I think it's cool. Like people are driving to my house and staying in my cabin and I, and I'm delighted that they're doing that. I think that's cool that people do it. I am just not that person that would probably not that person plan either. a trip around it and do it. I'd rather go to Vegas. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's just right. more of my style, but I, but the freak out, I don't understand the, like, we're going to have to get to, I'm, whatever. I don't, that's what I, I'm just, and I, and I don't know if that's like you know, government trying to stoke fear and create the chaos? Like, is this Bingo. predictive programming? Like, are, you know what I Bingo. mean? Yes. Or what's going on? Because I don't understand. I've just never, I don't recall any other eclipsey type of thing happening that caused this level of excitement and or drama and or like hullabaloo. Freak out. Like, this yeah. is just yeah. crazy to me. And a freak out. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't get it so anyway and somebody somebody said that it's biblical okay well if it's biblical then if there's biblical so that's going to be even more of a freak out well why I'd, I'd, if it's i believe in jesus christ if, if something happens if stuff goes down then it's meant to go down you know it's i don't you know what i mean i'm not going to worry about it there's why <laughs> what what is why worry about it I Everybody just worries. It's very too much. odd how everyone is it's, freaking out about nobody, this. It's, nobody, nobody everyone needs to, to stop. Yeah. Stop uh, Teresa Raimundo, thank you very much. Teresa says there's about 400 dumb people in that building that represent the U.S. to include Ted Lou. You're absolutely right. And she says, did we just revert to the Middle Ages? Oh no, the eclipse. I know. It's like fine. literally, nothing is going to change as four a result of, of this. Just yeah. It's four minutes. Just take. Just look at it. Enjoy it. But then just move on with your life. Right. You know. It's I'm fine. not planning on stocking up on food, water, and fuel. But like now I'm worried. Am I crazy not no, to? No, it's fine. <laughs> you don't need to you worry. in the world. Okay, so let's move on to Christine Blasey Ford. I can't who, wait to talk about her today. You guys, she's written a book, uh, her of memoir, course. Or whatever. Of course she wrote a book, of course. And she appeared on The View, of course, to talk about it. And it was her first stop. And they were just so honored and delighted oh, to have gosh, her. So the way that Whoopi introduced her was to just, like, thank her profusely for, like, choosing them. Mm -hmm. uh, and here is that. The entire country was hanging on every word of Dr. Christine Blasey Ford's gripping congressional testimony in 2018, alleging she was sexually assaulted by then Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh back in high school. And now she is sharing how she found the courage to speak out and the impact it had on her life in the new memoir, One Way Back. Please welcome Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. to say that you know to face those those people the way they were looking and dealing with you it, it that is bravery under a whole different kind of fire That's right i just wanted to say but since you testified back in 2018 you've largely stayed out of the public eye and you uh you've not ever done a live interview before Right. So first of all, thanks for coming yeah, to us. Thanks for yeah. having me. And <laughs> there. I mean, do you guys have any coffee? Do you have coffee? Do you have any caffeine? If it's I'm available? gonna need some caffeine if it's available. I really need some. She so had you quite, haven't quite the glow up, don't you think? She had a little bit of a glow up. She looks very, very nice. Mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. haven't heard her fry yet, you guys. Just I don't know how to prepare mm -hmm. you adequately to to deal with the fry, but it, there's mm -hmm. a lot of it. Um, and Sarah Haynes was the one to ask her or to say to her, you know, there's like so many people that still don't believe your story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> um, and so she responded to that and the voice, you guys just listen to the voice. Uh, yes. Um, well, you've been called um, a highly credible witness, uh, and you're, a, you have a PhD in psychology. You're, a uh, 
professor. You teach at Palo Alto and Stanford University. Send your kids there. But even yeah. today, some people remain skeptical of your story. And you write that during the hearing, Senator Lindsey Graham wouldn't even make eye contact with you. Were you prepared for that kind of response? I was prepared ahead of time that they, that none of the Republicans were going to speak with me and they were going to use an outside interviewer. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually surprised at how kind some of the other Republican senators were who broke that protocol and said hello. Who was um, that? Can you name a good one? Um, Senator Flake and Senator Sass both came They're over and said hello. Neither one's gone in Congress anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but still, a credit. Still. There. Yeah, yeah. yeah credit. good for them. Both good men. Yeah. So there I, was that. I, want, I just, I'm, I'm so angry right now. <laughs> I'm just well, trying not. To, I'm trying not to say really awful things. I'm just like I had to take a nice pause there because I'm like in my brain. I'm thinking to myself, Daisy, you gotta, you gotta get it together. You gotta be nice. Just try to be nice. Cause Why? She's, well, because I just don't <laughs> like her. I just I remember. I remember when we talked about her on the radio. It was mm -hmm. before COVID. We spent so much time talking about her on the radio. And I just, God, she was awful. This whole thing was awful. The whole yeah. Kavanaugh thing was awful. I just remember like the yearbooks, the things that were said, the things that were brought up from like a gajillion years ago. The whole process was a spectacle. And she was the poster girl for the spectacle. And mm -hmm. it was stupid. It was just stupid. And now she's writing a book and she's making money, more money off of it. Remember the GoFundMe? The GoFundMe, what was it? Like $650,000? Mm -hmm. Yep. She's, it's just, the whole thing is shameless and gross. I'm just grossed out by it all. All of it. And now she went on whatever this is, the Sunday morning show also. And um, the fry was on thick in this interview. So just get ready. Were you naive about how the process worked? I like to use the word idealistic, but maybe I was naive for sure about how um, the consequences and how bad it would be after I testified. And in a way that was actually good that I didn't really know Why? how it would be, how it would play out later. Um, because if I had known, I don't think I would have jumped off the diving board if, if I had known. Not knowing served me in a way why, does she why talk do you like people that? talk like that why <laughs> why? why did she oh talk oh my god oh, she talks like a oh god the, the voice it, i can't i can't take her seriously it's unbearable and she's it's a absolutely unbearable she's a professor at stanford so you have to sit in a class and you got to listen to that shit like yeah. for like two hours at a time i couldn't i couldn't do it i'd be like i gotta i can't i'm changing my major <laughs> I was I so, it. and I know you were too. I, we, I think I can speak for both of us when I say we were so emotionally invested in that Kavanaugh oh trial, God, the whole so spectacle, yes. because it was so awful what they did to him. Uh -huh. I remember literally sobbing through Susan Collins' ultimate like hour long reason for siding with him, for voting to confirm him. I mean, like that is how invested I was because it oh, was yeah. such a it was so, um, what's the word? Just a, a, a it was grueling. awful thing that they did to him. Like right. unforgivable thing that was done to him. I think you're absolutely like when you say emotionally investing. Yeah, we were, we were, oh my gosh. And it was, I just remember it was just a couple years into our radio career. And it was every day for like, I mean, we, it was day in and day out for a long yeah. time. We went through that and it, man, I just remember thinking this is. I just have, ne we've never seen anything like that. What that man went through and his family and his wife and his kids, mm -hmm. just that I, I'm so glad that he's on the Supreme court, but, what, but, but the process that he had to go through to get there, nobody should have to go through that. What he no, went through. It was it was horrendous. It was and um, Molly Hemingway, did, you know, she wrote a whole book about this entire trial. And she posted, just as a reminder, yesterday, uh, I think there's 20 different little headlines just to remind people about how ridiculous her story was, that there was no evidence that they ever met, that her very best friend in the world, Leland Kaiser, said she yep. had no confidence in her story, mm -hmm. that friends pressured Kaiser to change her story. All the witnesses dispute this claim. Yep. Um, 
her father supported Judge Kavanaugh. Can you even? Uh, Christine herself doesn't remember the location, how she got there, how she got home, the date, the time of the week. She remembers so little about the actual event itself. Right. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And so she's now going to make a bunch of money off of this ridiculous yep. book. Yep. And what's Judge Kavanaugh get to say about it? He's Nothing. just got to sit there and do his job take and pretend it. that this is all not happening and it's infuriating. He's got to take it. But listen, I hope she enjoys the money. Oh, my gosh. I hope she enjoys so it. I hope she enjoys her time on The View. Ugh. So gross. Paula Johnson, thank you. Paula says, we in Vermont are in the path of totality and are expecting thousands. And I am only worried that there will be illegals among them. Well, I mean, everybody should be worried about that all the time, honestly, because mm -hmm. they yeah. are everywhere. Yeah. Uh, they Florida are. Medicare broker, thank you. Uh, Florida Medicare broker says this country needs Jesus. Yeah, we do. Yeah. All right. Uh, we talked about this yesterday, but we need to talk about it again because the RFK Jr. VP pick, the running mate pick, Still lots and lots of stories swirling about that, including a video that he himself put out just to remind people to get everyone hype for the March 26 announcement. Here he is. Hey, everybody. You've probably heard by now that I'm about to announce my running mate, the person who will serve as my vice president. Those press reports got some of the details wrong, but on March 26 in Oakland, I'm going to straighten it all out. I'm going to announce that day an extraordinary running mate who's going to be my partner in government. I can't tell you who it is right now, but I can tell you that I could not possibly have found a better partner for governing this country. And I'll give you another hint. This announcement is really going to shake up the political establishment. I'd love for you to join me in Oakland to welcome this dynamic individual into our campaign. We're about to take my campaign to a whole new level. It's Christine Blasey Ford. <laughs> It's the voice tour. Think it's her. <laughs> it's the the voice tour twenty four. <laughs> I can't. I think that's right. I don't think that's right. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I cannot. I just. I'm sorry. It's just the voices. So many voices today, you guys. I can't. A lot of voices going on. Sorry. A lot of voices. I I give him a pass because his is a neurological I issue know, that he cannot I'm control. I'm, I'm joking. It's just all a big joke. But I. Christine I, and Jessica and those idiots totally it, have control they it's by choose choice. to talk that way you guys they choose it they do i'm joking but listen <laughs> at the same time i'm so sick of him teasing his running mate i'm also <laughs> sick of him today too i'm over it just freaking <laughs> say it or shut up i hate <gasps> it when they do this i really do it's it's hillary clinton all over again i don't care quit talking about it it's like until just, you're gonna say it until you're gonna Stop say it. it either say it or shut up i'm so <laughs> sick of this Oh my God. Well, he went on. Now, to be fair, people keep asking him about it. So that could be a reason that he keeps talking about it. He was on with Chris Cuomo last night. And in within this clip, you're going to see that they put on the screen the full or a fuller list of people that um, RFK Jr. is considering. And so like Tulsi is on there. Um, and so it's just an interesting list. There were names on there that I hadn't seen before. Rand Paul, I believe, is on there as well. So I don't, you know, I know yesterday it seemed like it was kind of a done deal with that Shanahan or Shallahan or whatever that chick's name is. She's still very much in the mix. And Chris Cuomo isn't trying to necessarily trying to get him to say specifically that it's her, but he wants an explanation about why she's in the mix. And so you'll see that screen. You'll see the screen change with all of the people that are considered. And you'll hear him talk about this right now. Uh, Bobby, while I have you, the first one is um, I don't want you to jump your own announcement. But one of the names that's being uh, bandied about, who doesn't throw footballs for the Jets, is uh, Nicole Shanahan. <laughs> and w without you uh, saying anything, I'm, you, know, you know me better than that. You'll announce it when you want to. What do you make of the obvious criticism, which is you're supposed to be a disruptor? Uh, and to say that the way the parties are doing things, specifically the Democratic Party in your case, uh, is that it's all about money and pressure and you're against that. Uh, the criticism is that if this person is being considered, let alone the choice, uh, she's known to have a lot of money and is the suggestion that you are willing to pay for an election. Yeah, I mean, I would never choose a vice presidential candidate based upon how much money that they have. 
Um, I talked to Aaron, as you pointed out. I've talked to many, many others. We we liked Aaron for some, some of the reasons. I talked to Nicole um, for some of the same reasons. They're young. Uh, we our campaign is you know one of the the principal priorities of our campaign is is bringing young people into politics and addressing the the deprivation that is now and the hopelessness that is affecting this generation. Nicole, like Aaron, like uh, Aaron Rodgers, has been interested in in regenerative agriculture, in press freedom, in ending the chronic disease epidemic. Uh, in addressing the, the, you know, the terrible national debt, thirty-four trillion dollars again, that's hitting these young people. Um, so, Romans? you know, oh I God. like both of them, and I think we had, we just had an abundance yeah. of really great candidates that we talked to. We have now chosen somebody, and we're going to announce that next Tuesday on the twenty-sixth in Oakland. Everybody's welcome, and Chris, I personally invite you to be there, and I hope you'll come. Appreciate it. Um, quick follow: Would would Shanahan be in the running if she was broke? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh my God! She has, no way. When people, yeah, absolutely. No, she would not. She would not be in the running if she would. She wouldn't even be on your radar if she were broke. Come she on. just happened to pay for your Super Bowl ad, I and mean, like that has on. nothing to do with it. Yeah, that, that is. But who knows? Line. We don't even know. We don't know for sure if it's her. I mean, it seems like it's probably her, but I don't know. I, it, but Tony just, Robbins, Tony, what, Rob- what is happening? <laughs> because listen, you have to think about all these VP candidates as being the, the president. Something happens to the president, you got to think of the VP as taking over. Mm-hmm. So, no, no to Tony. Mike Rowe didn't say no way. Mike, we just played a clip of him yesterday saying that yeah. he absolutely considered it. So I, I don't, I don't I know, know what you've heard, but he did not say no uh, way. I don't think he's going to do it though. Do you no, really I mean I don't do think it? he's the choice. I don't, I don't think he's the actual I think choice. Out of all those people on that list, I think Tulsi Gabbard would be the strongest one for him to pick if he were if he wanted to actually have a shot at winning. I think she would be the strongest pick. I think Rand Paul would ruin his career as a conservative if he did that. Because he's a conservative, right? He's a he's a libertarian slash conservative. He's not a Democrat, which is a, I mean, I don't but know. But what if be, it was like a unity thing? Like, what if he did it as a unity thing? Tulsi would be his greatest pick. Tulsi, he should totally pick her. If he wants to have a shot, I think he should pick her. Because oh my god, she would pull. <laughs> she would pull independence. She would pull. Yeah. People. Michael Steller, exactly. Michael Steller, thank you. He says, if it's Tulsi, we're in trouble. Yeah, I think I absolutely agree with you. She's going to, because she will pull people. She'll pull Democrats. She'll pull Republicans. She'll pull a lot of, and she'll pull everybody. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, not me. I'm just saying other people are going to find that to be an attractive ticket. And he's saying it'll be somebody that shakes up the establishment. Yeah, she does that. I mean, all of his, all of his, the people on that list are going to shake it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know so who that bizarre. one guy was on the right. Did you see that one last, that other name that was, like, I think it was a picture? woman. It was like Tracy somebody. I didn't, I have n- never heard that name ever. Yeah. Same. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Um, okay. So let's move on to Biden. Biden was giving a speech yesterday and he told a very interesting story that I think shed some unwanted light on Jill Biden and what she really cares about. Um, And I don't think he meant to do this. I don't think he meant to tell the story in this way, but I'll let you hear it. And then you tell me what you think about Jill Biden after hearing it. This thinks to be listed as the poorest man in Congress for 36 years. I got a phone call. My wife was campaigning up. I was campaigning up in New Hampshire back when that statistic came out in the 90s. And she called, I used to call one because the kids were little when I was away. and say, how's everything going? And I got this, fine. Well, you know you're in trouble when your wife or husband says, fine. And I said, what's the matter? She said, only an elected official's husband or wife could understand this. She said, do you read today's paper? I said, they don't have today's paper. Club Wilmington paper, Delaware, up in Nevada, up in, uh, uh, where, with Lay, where I'm with Leahy, up in Vermont. And she said, well, let me read it. Top of the fold headline, Biden, poorest man in Congress. Is that true? I thought, 
don't know what the hell is true, but it turned out it was true. Hey. Yeah. I thought did. that was very, very interesting. And I bet you that actually is not a lie. I mean, he's told a lot of whoppers, but that mm -hmm. seems like it's true. <laughs> and he wasn't supposed to say it out loud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's probably off script. And he was like, I'm just going to go ahead and say this out loud. And she's probably like, you weren't supposed to say that one out loud. You just made me look like a money grubber. And she is. Because if yeah. she wasn't a money grubber, he wouldn't be president right now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's all exactly. she cares about is money and power. And that's why this old man with dementia is president right now. <laughs> it's because of her. Um, I don't know if people saw this was like a, a clip that was going around one of his confused moments where he was talking to this blonde woman and there's a moment where Jill comes up to him and like seems to point him to a different direction. Um, and, and then he ends up not following her. He walks the opposite direction from where she pointed. So it's just kind of like one of those funny little clips that's going around socials right now, but somebody put a voiceover over it and it's so funny. And it sounds so much like them. Um, so again, this is a voiceover. This is not actually the audio. I want to make that clear because it's it does seem really, really real. Um, I love whoever put this together. Top of the fold <laughs> headline: Biden. Oh crap! Poor. I don't know what the hell is true, but it turned out it was true. Hey Jill, let's go get ice cream. I'm hungry. You idiot! I'm over here. That's not me. Oh, okay. How do I get off this stage? Follow me. <laughs> oh, okay. I give up. <laughs> I so, oh my God. There's Biden as a woman. It's, be it's better than that. It's Biden as Taylor Loren. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I cannot wait. I haven't <laughs> seen this one yet. You guys, I have not seen Biden oh as my Taylor God. Loren. I cannot this wait. This was my favorite thing on the internet yesterday by far and stick it out till the very end because there's a surprise at the end. <laughs> Remove every single social tie. I had severe PTSD from this. I, I contemplated suicide. It got really bad. You feel like any little piece of information that gets out on you will be used by the worst people on the internet to destroy oh your God, life. I can't. And it's so isolating. I'm terrified. <laughs> It's horrifying. I'm so mad. I'm a sly in here. It's really hard. <laughs> you cannot it's believe so great. That that's a thing. <laughs> that's, those are the people that I love on the internet. Right? Those this is people. why the internet is that's the greatest why. thing ever. That's, it's to amuse me with things like that. That's why. <laughs> Um, and then before we get to DD, which is uh, Dad Joke Wednesday um, it is, it today. Is Dad Joke Wednesday. One amazing clip that I just cannot get over that I thought everybody would enjoy. So back in the day, um, I've even written about this like way back in the day. I'm talking 20 years ago, probably. And, and I think it still exists today. In fact, I know it still exists. Omegle, that um, chat, like a way that you can meet a stranger and start talking to a stranger. Yeah. Um, now, I, it used to just be that you typed a dude on it, right? You just typed to strangers. Now it's like face-to-face like calling FaceTime. with strangers. Right. And so what happens in this clip that you're about to see, this Omegle chat, these two dudes are talking and they're one of the dudes, his girlfriend is in the back of the frame. Like she's in the background mm -hmm. and the dude that, that like m gets, you know, matched up with the stranger recognizes her and it's his girlfriend. He thinks. And then what happens from there is so incredible that I almost cannot believe it. Watch. Katie. Bro, I'm not Katie. Stop saying Katie. What are you talking about? You talking to her? Hey, what are you doing? I'm not Katie. That's my girlfriend, Hannah, bro. I'm skipping you. <laughs> You're getting bro, skipped. what are you talking about, bro? That's literally my girlfriend. You know this guy? I, I don't know. What do you do with this guy? I don't know him. You do know him. You really <laughs> don't know me. What do you? What does that even mean? You're saying that that's not you? That's not me. That's literally you right oh my gosh. I've never seen this guy. You were literally just at my apartment an hour ago. You said you went to go get your nails done an hour ago. I did get my nails done. They're done. Wait, wait. She couldn't have been at your apartment an hour ago. You said you're in Texas. I'm in oh Tennessee. God. Do you not see that this is the same person in the picture? No, I see that, but that's also impossible if she was there an hour ago. Where, where is your girlfriend from? My girlfriend's from California. You're from California. I'm from California. <laughs> Did you ever get those papers back from the adoption place? You were adopted? Yeah. If it's not my girlfriend, bro, oh, then I'm going to call her phone right now. And I'll hear it. Yeah. What the fuck? Babe. What? Do you have a twin? 
No. What's your name? I'm Katie. Were you adopted in San Bernardino, California? Uh, yeah. Babe, I literally think that you guys are twins. We could be. You guys are literally spitting image. (laughs) We should do a trip. (laughs) We're going. I booked the flight. They're ready. The Does she like wear SPF 3000? Does she hate flowers? Uh, yep. Does your girlfriend know how to drive? <laughs> <laughs> I wish we were twins. Oh my God. You even. So the guys became friends, right? Just because they were like, they wanted to become friends for whatever random reasons. And their girlfriends are twins. And they didn't even know they had a twin. Oh my God. <laughs> that, you know what? I'm, so, listen, that's God. That's I mean, God at work right there. Like that, oh my God. that stuff does not happen by accident. That is the coolest story. I love that. That's, I know. Is, it's amazing. I love that stuff. Oh my it's gosh. Just the most amazing thing ever. That is remarkable. <laughs> I hope that they are like BFFs now and they're all hanging out. And she's like, this is my twin sister. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. Like I was wow. losing my mind the entire time I was watching. It. I was like, this is the best thing I've ever also, seen. Also, like, that's crazy. So it, like a, a woman gives up her twin daughters for adoption and two separate people take instead of somebody adopting the twins. Right. Wow. Right. Oh my it's gosh. Amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Oh my God. I know people will be like, it's not real. I don't even care. I don't even care if it's real or not. If somebody's going to go to that much trouble to create that as a skit, I like, mean, they, I more power to them. I don't <laughs> care. Y'all are so gullible. Okay. Then There's I'm no gullible. way. Then I'm gullible. Yeah. I don't, I don't, but because if that is a skit, it is the greatest skit of all time. And, and by I, the way, yeah. if you haven't seen all the shows about the 23 and me, people finding out that they have siblings, yeah. this oh stuff God. happens all the time. It happened to my husband. It happened to my husband. He found out that he had siblings on Facebook. It happens <laughs> all the time. You guys, he found four. Wasn't a skit. Wasn't a skit. Found four siblings on Facebook. Believe me. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Every so whether day. or not that mm-hmm. particular one happened or not, it doesn't matter. This kind of stuff happens it all does. the time. It does. happens all the time. I mean, you guys may have all had normal families, but my husband and I didn't. So, <laughs> hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, Scarlett found out my uncle had a daughter that he didn't know he had. I mean, this mm-hmm. is like, yeah, yeah, guys have no idea sometimes who they've impregnated. Yeah. My husband found he, four four siblings he found on Facebook, and then another one came along a couple years later, and now we're friends with her too. Facebook, yeah, happens. amazing, happens amazing. all the time. Mm-hmm. All right, um, let's get to double D's, which are which is actually a TikTok. So uh, before we open that, let me just remind people that there are always big sales at mypillow.com slash chicks slides if you guys are not if you have not tried this we should show them at some point yeah the slides people pay like a lot of money for like those you know like designer slides and everything i gotta tell you the my pillow slides i live in them in the summer and they are hardy and durable and like i i I love they're so they're like pillows like my pillows They're, they're like pillows for your feet. And they're like 25 bucks. You can get them 20 with a promo code. You can get them for like 25 bucks worth every penny. They have all different colors. You guys should totally check them out. I'm telling you right now, go do that at my pillow. They, yeah. They're the best. It's one I of the live things, in them. One of the many things that's on super sale right now. And when you mm-hmm. use code chicks, less than 25 bucks, <laughs> mypillow.com slash. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any preparation that you want to give for your? No, it's just it's dad joke Wednesday, and this is a nice little montage of a couple dad jokes. So here you go. My wife says I have two major faults. I don't listen, and something else. (laughs) I only believe in twelve point five percent of the Bible. I guess that makes me an atheist. (laughs) Atheist, spiritual theorist, walk into a bar. Now you can't tell me that's a coincidence. <laughs> Have you seen the movie Constipation? Me either. <laughs> it hasn't come out yet. <laughs> when your wife says she'll be home in five minutes, look at his coat. She will be. 
You don't have to remind her every 15 minutes. <laughs> True. My wallet is just like an onion. Every time I open it, it makes me cry. Apparently 30% of owners let their pets sleep in their bed. Not a good idea, though. I let mine. My goldfish died. <laughs> so I was getting stupid. an Uber the other day, and the driver said, I love my job. I'm my own boss. Nobody tells me what to do. Then I said, turn left here. Clooney, DiCaprio, and McConaughey all want to put a movie together. Clooney says, I'll direct. DiCaprio's like, I'll act. McConaughey's like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> there you go. That was it. <laughs> A little compilation. Bad joke Wednesday. They weren't my favorite. I'll I'll be honest I with mean, you. You yeah. sent them to me, and I was like, "These are I mean, they're I not like call these. They're lame." Because <laughs> dad jokes are usually lame. That's what they are. I love a lot of dad jokes. A lot of them are lame. Okay, I but it was a bunch of lame of ones together with like <laughs> fur coats. Out and in the cold. I, are they? I haven't seen those guys before, but I'm assuming the the goal is that they don't want to laugh. Like they're, it's like they're yeah, not a, yeah. winning they're if just, they laugh. And they're just telling lame dad jokes. That's what they do out in the <laughs> cold with like frou frou drinks and fur coats and fur coats. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. coat. Because that's what they're the doing. Coat. Yeah, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I heard some whimpering, so I'm just looking around. Is she okay? Sure. Oh, it's is just dreaming. Okay? She's, She's just dreaming. dreaming. She's chasing squirrels. He's running. He's running. <laughs> um, okay, let's get to some talks. And we have to start with Miss Peaches. You guys, uh, I don't I don't even like pit bulls, okay? I don't even like them. But Miss Peaches, there's something about the way he constantly says her name. I know. It's so endearing. She's and so he's got, I've got two to share. One is when he bought her like a little swimming pool water sprayer thing mm -hmm. and she does not know how to handle it you guys <laughs> so her reaction is everything i bought you a toy after he sent it i don't know if you're gonna like it it's, it's a so pool here. i got you a pool oh my God. look at her she's like i don't know <laughs> about she this. totally freezes the water's like in her face. You like it, Miss Peaches. Miss Peaches. Does that feel good on this I hot cannot. day? Oh, you're an angel. <laughs> it's so it's ridiculous with her. Unless you like it. Look oh, at her face. She's like, this guy has kidnapped oh, me, God. and I am here against my will. So I can't do anything. Right the face. I am. Oh, Miss I can't Miss escape Miss this guy. Peaches. It's like a massage. <laughs> I can't Miss leave. Peaches. I can never leave. This guy has kidnapped oh, me. Peaches getting a water massage. <laughs> I love you, Peaches. <laughs> he oh loves her god. so much. Oh my god. Oh my god. He'll, <laughs> never, he'll never love a woman like that, ever. I mean, he it's will like not. that's it. He absolutely Never. Will not. Mm -mm. And the world has fallen in love with Miss Peaches as well. So mm -hmm. uh, apparently, Dave went out for some fine dining at an Italian restaurant, and of course, Dave is very well recognized. And now Miss Peaches is famous, and so Miss Peaches got a very, very special doggy bag, and here she is reacting to it. Miss Peaches, Miss Peaches, look what I brought you. <laughs> Oh my Miss Peaches, I'm not going to go to Carbone and eat fine dining. They literally brought this said, this is for Miss Peaches. Oh my God. She's like, I'm going to go on my rug. Oh, I'm leaving. I'm going to the bedroom. Bye. Where are you going, Miss Peaches? Miss Peaches, that's a veal. Of She's gonna go on the white couch. She's gonna ruin your white couch. Don't get it on the white couch. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what dogs do. Oh, that's for oh, you, Miss Sweet Peach. girl. You went from the shelter to Carbone. <laughs> you went from the shelter to Carbone. Are you gonna have diarrhea though? You she probably will get diarrhea. Yeah. I'd rather it not be on the white couch. <laughs> Look at him concerned about his white couch. It's yours. 
That's yours, Miss Beaches. I'm not gonna take it. <laughs> he went from the Swear to God, to that dog. Phone. Ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous. So spoiled. I know yesterday I said that my husband wanted to come back in his next life as one of my dogs. I think mm -hmm. he might want to come back as one of Dave Portnoy's as peaches. Dogs. He wants to come back as peaches. <laughs> you get to layer, you get to be picked oh up God. and put in a pool. You don't even have to walk <laughs> to the pool and then you get carbones. Right. <laughs> Um, also have a couple videos of animals being fantastic moms, um, which is so, so sweet. And so, Aww. for example, look at this mama bunny feeding oh her God. rabbit. She's exhausted. Look how exhausted look, she is. She's, she's like, so I'm taking bad. a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a nap. You kids are totally wearing me out. I look, mean, listen to the, did, you, did you hear them eating? Yeah. They're starving. They're rabbits. I know. They're Look so at what a good mama. Cute. She is a good But mama. then there's also a squirrel mama who has just had babies. And apparently, I don't know how this woman did this, but the squirrel made a human friend and wants to show her the babies. Oh, my god! And I cannot deal with how much I need this to be me. It needs to be me. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. What? All right. Let's go. What in the world? I'd be so afraid to be yes. rabid. Come on. Okay, I'll, I'll come up the ladder. I'll come up the ladder. I will. I'll come up. Here, you go up. You go up. Oh we'll my up. gosh. I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh my gosh, how neat is this? Oh. Okay. What? What is it? What is the mama's one? Is it baby? Come here, honey. Come right here, baby. Where are the babies? I want to see this. It's beautiful. Where are the babies? Oh, where are the babies? Oh, there they are. Here's the babies. There are the babies. Oh, I don't see them. They're right under her. Oh, dear mama. Oh, my gosh. You'll see them a little bit better. Oh, oh you're such a good mama. Look at you. I wonder how many they have at a time. Oh my She's got three. So, so My sweet. God. I did it. I did it. Oh, my God. One, two. How many babies? That is just the sweetest. Isn't it the coolest thing? That is really, really cool. And then the and other. She wanted to show her. It is. Know? It's so neat. And the other animal that is like the coolest mama is possums. Oh, yeah. Because the way they have them all. hanging off of them. I mean, it's like, yeah. it's kind of like creepy looking at first, but man, they are good mamas. They're such good mamas. Such oh my God. Sweeties. Such a cool thing. Um, okay. So I don't I know. know hold, if... on, hold, on. I, hold on. I see <laughs> Jose Rodriguez said, <laughs> y'all are so gullible. The squirrel set up that skit. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, our audience wants to ruin everything oh for my us. God, no, that's <laughs> the greatest comment ever, Jose. I love that comment. That's you win. You win today. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That squirrel set that, that up, man. That's not real. <laughs> yeah, we're so gullible. So true. Set it up. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if this video is a prank or if this woman actually got her lips done. I have no idea. What matters <laughs> is not that. Like, either she's got fake lips or they're, it's a prank. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The reaction of her boy or her brother's to her suspected lip fillers, what they think is lip filler, <laughs> is so freaking awesome and so brotherly that I just die. Bill, why you got on a mask in the car? Are you sick or something? No, I got my lips done. Richard, what do you mean you got your lips done? I got lip filler. Let me see what it looks like. Take the mask off. No, you're gonna laugh. I'm not gonna laugh. You got I already love them. Let me see what it looks like. 
I already love them. That. Okay, because you, you have to hear everything. Amazing. Just the way you. Oh my God! What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? Put the mask back on. Are you sick? What is that? Why does it look like that? <laughs> that's not filler. That's an infection. <laughs> what disease is that? You got COVID thirty-seven? That's not filler. Oh that my God! The one's out of the car. We got to go to hospital. No, you need antibiotics for that. I don't. You have an infection. No, I don't. Is that contagious? Sixty. Go like. back. Get out the car. Talk to me outside the window. Well, I think I look good. I think I look like Beyonce. Girl, you look like Jay Z. You don't look like Queen Bee. Girl, you look like you got stung by a Queen Bee. <laughs> ah, that doesn't look good. Look at that. Look at that. Look at your oh my head. god, I just, love them. Exactly. That does not look look at you. You can't even look at yourself. Just, look, look at that. <laughs> you look crazy right now. You look crazy right now. That's look at this. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> 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 I'm sure it's a skit, but whatever. <laughs> I'm sure it's made up. But this is why brothers are the best. <laughs> brothers are awesome. They keep it real. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, last one, and then we have to talk about mask holes. We do. So, um, <laughs> but before we do that, embarrassing story time. This woman. <laughs> This is so <laughs> something I can see myself doing. So I feel her embarrassment on like a cellular level. Okay. So she's going to tell you what she said, what she, and she's mortified and rightly so. This is awesome. So I don't know if I've ever been so misunderstood and embarrassed in my whole life. I bought this cat backpack for my cat and I've been walking her with my dog and these two dogs on a leash with this guy start barking and I was like oh do you smell my cat <laughs> and this man looked at me like I was a monster <laughs> like I might as well have said <clears throat> other names for cats <laughs> and I had to turn around and go no sir like my cat in my in my cat backpack like there's a there's a there is a cat in my cat backpack. That's what I'm saying. Like, does your dog smell my cat? It's like a, an actual cat. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you would have done that. I would totally do that, and then I would be falling all over myself. To like yeah, you make would. It clear you would. What I meant? Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, and I'd be standing next to you, going, "It's she's she has problems." <laughs> She has, she has a lot of problems. <laughs> and then I'd say something worse. Like I would make it worse by saying, no, no, no. I mean, it's my cat. It's right in my box. And the Don't biggest problem, it's the right biggest my problem box. here is that. You totally <laughs> missed my, my second box. joke. No, I, I heard the box. I heard the box <laughs> thing. It really wasn't that funny. The, the biggest problem, <laughs> the biggest problem is that she bought a backpack for her cat. <laughs> That's like, who, well, if she wanted to walk, but also wanted to take her cat who doesn't like walks, like but walking, don't, then, don't, then leave the cat at home. <laughs> like, she wanted both people... of them to enjoy the outside. The cat doesn't want to enjoy outside. The cat doesn't want to do that. The cat wants to be at home. You know, what I don't I mean? know. I thought that cat looked like it was having fun. I thought it looked like it was having fun. The cat was embarrassed for her because no. of what she said to the guy. No, that cat. Was embarrassed. That cat was having. <laughs> so other people liked my box joke. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly. I would so do that. I can't even tell you how quickly I would do that. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> so many. Indian All right, you guys. Um, let's talk about mask holes. I did not know that mask holes still existed. Oh my god! But in fact, to, they do. You need to go to Austin, Texas, and I really? will show. And I will show you all the mask holes. Yeah. So they are, okay, and they I have exist. mixed feelings about masks because. If you're a person out in the world today wearing a mask, I immediately judge. And I don't want to be that person. Like, I want to believe the best in people such that if you're a person who is ill and you're trying to prevent your germs from getting on others, like, I appreciate you. You know what yeah, I mean? I do. 
But did we used to do that? We never used to do that. That's the thing. Like, I mean, if you have a terminal disease or if you have, you know, if you're immune, immunosuppressed in some way, I feel like four and a half years ago, you didn't walk around with a mask. Right. You know, but it now, just never was a thing. Right. But now I feel like people are just overly sensitive to that and they, and they do that. Some do. And then some yeah. are just mask holes. Some just feel right. like they have, they are so hypersensitive and they're freaked out and they're paranoid and they're mentally deranged that they wear masks all the time. And then, and there's some people who are still doing it to virtue signal like you, Bernie, because right. we remember him <laughs> from the state of the but union why? where he was talking like literally in the other, <laughs> in faces of people directly in their faces. And then as soon as he stopped talking to listen to a speech, then he puts it on like well, that, that doesn't help no sense that doesn't help yeah makes no sense makes no yeah. sense so and that's the thing is that because of covid hysteria i now judge immediately my instant gut instinct is to judge and to just be mm -hmm. like looking at disdain with anybody who wears a mask because I, and i shouldn't be that way i should assume the best in people but i don't because of how we all were treated and how like we were how everything went during yeah, COVID. but the but the mask holes are judging you. That's probably true, and they're judging for not wearing one for not wearing one, and they're judging our children. They're judging the us the way that we parent our children. They're judging all of us for not masking up. I went into a um, a doctor's office last week. I had an endocrinology appointment, and my doctor, who has been practicing medicine for thirty seven years, who I won't go back to after last time. She walked in with a mask on. She's fine. She doesn't have a cold or anything like that. She just had a mask on, which I thought was kind of weird. I don't know why. Like, why are some doctors doing it still when I feel like they know better? You know what I mean? Because, yeah. again, four and a half years ago, they didn't do that. They didn't do it. Right. So it's like our world is just different. Like, our whole – everything that we know is – we like, we know that they didn't help. <laughs> so, and you think doctors of all people and nurses and people in the medical field would know that that was the case, but they, they still, I still see doc, like it's not all doctors. I still see just like a couple doctors. Yeah. There's pockets there. of doctors. Pockets of doctors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That will wear them. And I'm like, but why? Why well, and like, that? um, wasn't Jerome Adams, the guy from Indiana, wasn't he Trump's, uh, surgeon general? Uh -huh. That was, was yeah. that his role? I think, I think so. he was surgeon yeah. general. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he is all over Twitter, like right now. He recently took a flight and he masks up constantly. And so he really, saying, yeah, he posted a picture, mm -hmm. like a selfie of him on a flight, fully masked. And he said, um, interesting thing just happened. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Um, I put my mask on on this flight and I noticed people noticing me do that and then immediately pulling out their own masks and also putting them on. So it was almost like I made them feel like it's okay to not be the only one wearing a mask. So maybe more people would wear them. Like if somebody just makes that first move, a whole bunch of people responded to him and they were like, there's no way that happened. Like, I don't even believe you. Right. Um, <laughs> because he's been insane about masks, like from Trump on, you know, from his time as Surgeon General to today. And I know his wife is very ill. And I, I think that plays into his thinking on this. But it's crazy to me how so many, so many studies have now come out that say this was a pointless exercise. This did mm -hmm. not change anything. Yeah. And I'm really resentful of the fact that our kids were forced to mask up. I'm totally. Like, I, that's unforgivable to me. In, even in, in, to say. in ridiculous ways. You know, like my kid was forced to wear a mask in hallways, walking up and down right. hallways of school. And then she'd go to her classroom with the same kids she was walking in the halls with, get to her classroom and she could take off her mask sitting at her desk with those same kids. I'm sorry, <laughs> WTF. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It was all virtue signaling. It was stupid and it made no sense. And there was no scientific basis on that. Nothing. Right. It was right. dumb. And so um, the whole reason that we're bringing this up is because there was a video that started circulating around socials a few days ago of some woman who literally lives across the country from the people she's talking about. I think they're family members even. Yeah. And she found out 
that these people don't wear masks on the regular and is basically cutting off interaction with them. She doesn't have physical interaction with them because they live miles apart, but she's cutting off any like phone conversations or computer conversations because she's this psychotic. I would not have believed this was real. I would have said, this is probably a skit if I had first seen it. <laughs> but then she doubled down after all of the reaction. So here's the first video. A few weeks ago, I found out that the person that I love most in this world is no longer masking their entire family, including four small children, have stopped masking. Oh I would God. hope so. And yesterday I texted her and I said, hey, I I can't get past the fact that you all are no longer masking. Like, with everything that's happening in the world right now, with COVID, with RSV, with measles, with everything that's coming back, not masking is wild behavior to me. Like I, community care is important to me. I need to know that the people in my life care about their health and the health of the people around them. To which I received a three and a half page dissertation justifying their behavior. Including classics such as, we're not breaking any rules. We're doing way better than everyone else around us. We don't go anywhere if we feel sick. My personal favorite was um, paraphrased, you couldn't possibly understand because you don't have kids. All these things are true. Yeah, It's illogical to expect children to continue masking and stay in lockdown. Also true. <laughs> so I responded and I said, you know, as I already stated, it's your choice to make. I'm sure you will do everything you can to keep your family safe. The best thing for me right now is to take a step away from this relationship. What a psycho, man. Oh I love you God. all, but I have to take care of myself first and foremost. I hope you understand. Good Lord. And she says, sure, I can't force you to stay. And I'm telling you this because I know I'm not the only one out here who is dealing with, Psychosis. struggling with people in their lives that they care about very much, that are no longer taking mitigation efforts. Oh my God. I can't have people in my life that make me feel unsafe. And they live on the other coast, but that's not the point. The point <laughs> is if I had the option to be around them right now, I couldn't because I wouldn't feel safe. Oh God, yes. And that means something to me. Oh my God. I, I, can, I live on the other coast, wow. but their germs could travel. <laughs> they could fly from <gasps> the other coast and hit me. If I she mean, ever goes outside ever, she's already negated everything she just said. Like right. if she's entering, if she's entering the world ever, she's engaging with people all the time, masked or not. And she can't avoid that because they're, thankfully, I think most people are over the nonsense and they're only masking if they are actually sick and not trying to cough on other people. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. I hope that that chick never has kids. My God. Right. Because there is some lunacy happening, or at least I hope she gets over the, the crazy that she's experiencing now before she decides to have children because damn. Yeah, that's some crazy happening right there. But I see it. I see it like in I know, like in the Austin area around the Austin area. I don't see it so much around where I live because, you know, I live in a normal place. <laughs> <laughs> but but like if I but if I go to Austin or whatever, because we visited there, you know, with the kids and there you will see like moms with their kids masked. And you're like, what? Because we do swim meets and stuff there. And like, you'll see the occasional mom with her kid and at a swim meet, you'll see like a kid suited up in a swimsuit with a mask on and then oh they'll my take God. the mask off to swim and then they'll put the mask back on. You're like, it is 2024. Like nobody else in here is, you're fine. You're oh fine. And God. I'm sorry for your mom because dang, I mean, these, I just, I feel sorry for kids who are raised in environments yeah. like that because it's just this extreme germophobia where- it's not serving them well. Those kids, I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for the parents, like that something is in their brain that's making them so afraid of the world. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, bubble boy it's is right. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. 
Well, she doubled down because the reaction was mostly like ours. Like, this is batshit, right? Like, the, mm -hmm. you're full on crazy. And so she released a second video. And I think she, you know, she definitely feels like she's in the right on this. She is doubling down. Papa Bear said, if that post wasn't an act, I advise you consider why so many people are saying what they're saying from a non-defensive standpoint. These people, these people in my comments, these very same people who are also no longer participating in community care, who overwhelmingly removed their masks the moment the government said COVID's over. Oh my God. These people who are screaming at me about how I need to get the fuck over it because COVID is over. It's nothing more than a cold. No one masks anymore. Follow the science. Masks don't even work. These people who are ripe with misinformation and cognitive dissonance <laughs> and are screaming, screaming at me about how I am a narcissist because I care about my health and the health of the people around me. And I believe that we all should because I believe that we should actively try not only to not harm the people around us, but to enrich the lives of the people in our community. And because I decided to remove myself from a relationship with a person who was no longer living that. These people who, because they disagree with me about masking, decided to attack me as a person, my intelligence, my sanity, my appearance, because they had no other argument. These people who are willing to pick up COVID cases like Pokemon <laughs> because they're healthy and it can't hurt them, it's just a cold, and fuck everyone else. Those people, I'm so good. Okay. Well, if you're good, right. enjoy the nobody being around you then. Right. Congrats. Enjoy, <laughs> exactly. Enjoy being alone you. and your 15th booster. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Have fun. You're with still that. probably going to get it. Uh, just FYI. She'll probably get it more than in, uh, most people yeah. with being alone and her 15th booster because that's how that works. You know, she has a cat box, like a backpack. Oh, yeah. She does. She has a, she has a cat backpack. And a box, <laughs> litter box, whatever. C. Douglas, thank you. C. Douglas says no longer true thanks to Hunter. Oh, I don't know what you were talking I don't know about. What that was like meant. a half an hour ago. I know. I don't <laughs> know what that is. Gosh, if we don't catch it right away. Sorry. Thompson Canine Services. Thank you. Thompson Canine Services says we had our primary in Ohio yesterday and I worked at the polls and all the mask wearers were Democrats. They had to determine which party they were voting in. <laughs> <laughs> it's you kind of know you know when you see them you know i mean that's I mean? my initial judgment right and then totally. i do feel like somewhat bad about having that initial I, judgment i don't i don't feel the least bit bad i don't feel bad <laughs> one bit i know uh, i don't i think that's the difference between you and me is that i i know exactly who i'm dealing with and i don't feel bad about it but you felt bad about criticizing christine blasey ford and i don't think you should feel bad about that at all did i, did I feel bad about that well, you were like, I need to be nice. I've got to be nice. I shouldn't say no. I, well, I was I was guarding my language because I didn't want to oh. offend people here. I was <laughs> that's what I was. I didn't I don't really care about I don't care about her. I care about the people in our audience and I don't want to offend people here because I think really mean things when I see your face. <laughs> that's that's the problem and i don't want to offend people here i'm just trying you know what i mean you were putting and on a little bit of a filter it's kind of like a little I, it's like filter. i love jesus but i say bad things sometimes you know what i mean <laughs> right and so i have to watch myself you see where i'm going with that i totally do totally do Lori weens thank you Lori says thank you ladies for all you do been listening so long i can't remember when i found you also i have ordered a cold hearty avocado tree from fast growing trees and it shipped Yay! yesterday that's what you got right i got the haas avocado tree what does that mean i think there's a difference i think they're because they have a couple different kind of avocado trees one is like because oh. i knew what a haas avocado was that's why i ordered it <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I didn't like, know that there was multiple kinds. I think, I don't know if cold hardy is different, but I think that it is because Haas huh. is like what I buy at the store because I get the H-A-A-S avocados. You know what I mean? I just don't know if it's, it's different. I think it's different. Yes. But hopefully they will both grow and we can compare avocados. <laughs> yeah. You guys yeah. will have to have like an avocado competition. <laughs> yes. I love avocados. That is awesome. Thank you. Yes, Scarlett, you do need to order a Japanese cherry tree from Fast Growing Trees. That is the best place to get them for sure. Yes. All right. Well, mask holes still exist. I'm sorry to tell everybody that, but they do. And you needed to know about it.
You totally and by the did. way, uh, Bradley yesterday, very upset because we did not bring it in. Oh my God. We didn't bring it in yesterday. I what know. were we thinking? He said so on YouTube and he was, <gasps> I mean, he was mad. And then I felt terrible and I was like, oh my God, I'm oh my so God. sorry. We have to bring it in extra hard. So like just bring an extra heart. I can't believe we didn't do in. that. Like that is just, that's bad. We always I think we got distracted in. because we were like, is there going to be flaps? Is there not going to be we're flaps? Gonna, I'm going to try to get flaps. I'm going to try to get flaps. Hold on. Okay. Yay. 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 She's going to try. She's going to try you guys. Here, baby. Oh, and Lori said cold hardy can grow in colder zones. That makes sense. Come here, baby. That makes sense. Come here. Let's get flaps. Everybody wants flaps. Let's see if we can. Uh-oh. Oh, oh God. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see him? Oh you my gosh, him? look He's at jumping. him. He's preventing oh, the flappularity. Don't jump on her. Don't jump. Oh, did oh, you guys hear the flap? Yeah, yeah. Okay. She did it. She, she did flapped. it. Let her flap. <laughs> let her live her life and flap. Now he's now it's so jumpy. Oh my gosh. He's so tigger. He's very He's excited. like he so just, tigger. He just came in and now it's gonna be World War World War Three, you guys. So this is my life. I know you guys are all jealous of my life. This is what I have going on back here. So, all right. Astrid's fighting back, though. She's like, I have oh, had enough won't. of your shit. She will not take his crap. I love that. You Get go, him, girl. Astrid. Get him. All right, you guys. All right, I'm going to go moderate and hopefully not die. So you guys have a, have a great day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.